Welcome to this presentation. I will give you an overview of one of our recent courses at Wolfram U that is focused on electrical engineering. The name of the course is Introduction to Electric Circuits, and you can find it at the Wolfram U site. Here you can see the link. This course consists of 26 lessons that make a total of four hours and a half. We included exercises, quizzes, and a final exam. And when you open the course, uh, you will see this, this framework that is used for the courses where you can find all the lessons here. You will have a video and you will also get the notes for, for each of, of the lessons, in, including some uh, bibliography and also the exercises. First, we will see a quick overview of the course, and then I will show you how I use the tools to create it. But first, why should we learn electronics? In, in modern days, we are surrounded by electronic devices, and we all carry some kind of computing device, uh, like a phone or a laptop. And in order to design these devices, we need uh, electrical engineering. And the field of electrical engineering is roughly divided into two main parts digital electronics, which has to do with microprocessors, GPUs, logic devices, and analog electronics, which is the main devices are like amplifiers, power converters, filters. And one of the differences is how, they, how these two domains represent the information. In the digital world, everything is represented with binary. So we can use voltages, two voltages to, to represent a, a logic zero or a logic one, which can be zero volts, to represent a zero, five volts or some something else to represent an R1. But in the analog domain, the information can take any value. So it can be, for example, any voltage between zero to five to represent a temperature that coming from a sensor. And we are, we are more used to see microprocessors as like the most important part in a, in a device. But if just by taking a look at this, this is a motherboard, we can see that it has a lot of analog components. Uh, apart from the, the CPU and, and other processors. And the role of all these analog components could be, for example, power management, so, which is uh, giving energy to all the different subsystems that the computer has. It can also help us to, to interface with the real world, for example, to produce uh, audio signals. And the role of analog electronics is also to, to adjust the levels of signals or doing signal conditioning in order to read information from sensors. And one big advantage of analog, analog electronics is that it can be used in high-speed controllers because analog electronics is quite fast compared to, to digital. So this course focuses on analog electronics. Specifically, the objective is being able to analyze and design circuits with operational amplifiers, which we call for short op-amps. Op-amps are these integrated circuits that can help us perform additions, multiplications, subtractions, even integration using voltages. And we can combine these, these blocks made with, anal with operational amplifiers in order to create more complex systems, for example, filters, controllers, amplifiers, or analog computers. In this picture, you can see two applications that I like. Uh, here we have a, a picture of my modular synthesizer, which it has many modules that I have designed. And these modules are a combination of, of many analog components and a few digital parts. And on the, on the right, we have another application, which is an analog computer, which, is, which gives us like basic blocks that we can connect together in order to perform a simulation, like to simulate differential equations. The structure of the course is, it is split in four parts, where we go from the basics to our final objective, which is learning operational amplifiers. In the first part, we try to explain without going into details how a simple electric circuit works. For example, here we have a circuit that consists of three main components, a capacitor, a resistor and a voltage source. And the capacitors are, are it's, it's a kind of device that stores energy. And a power supply or a voltage source, it's a, it's a component that provides energy. And the resistor, it's a component that allows, allows us to control the flow of energy. We can see this, for example, charging the battery of our phone, uh, where we can connect our phone to the power outlet using a wire and then energy from the voltage source is being transferred to the capacitor. So and this is a simulation model that we created in System Modeler. And in order to, to have a, an idea on how this circuit behaves, we can combine it with this kind of interactive simulations. 
Here we can see in the bottom the, the simulation results. In blue, we can see the voltage of the capacitor, which represents the energy that is stored. So in the beginning of this simulation, the capacitor is discharged, and then the energy from the voltage source is being transferred to the capacitor. And it has to go through the resistor, which, which is going to define how, how fast or how much energy it, it is flowing. And with this interactive simulation, we can explore what happens. For example, if I increase the value of the resistor, okay, if we increase the value of the resistor, the capacitor starts charging slower. In the contrary, if I decrease it, it will charge faster. If I change the value of the capacitor and I make a larger capacitor, I use a larger capacitor, it will take longer to, to charge. So and this is basically the what we learn in the first lesson or in the first part of, of, of the course, like just having this, this idea on how one of these circuits can work. The second part, which is basic theoretical concepts, uh, we learn the physical definitions of things like current, voltage, resistance, and power. These concepts are very important because they provide the mathematical models that will help us understand the behavior of circuits. Then we go into the third part in which we cover the methods for the analysis of circuits. When we start creating circuits using multiple components, it gets progressively difficult to obtain the design equations. Therefore, we need a systematic approach to analyze them. For that, we learn uh, methods like the mesh analysis and nodal analysis, which allow us to take a circuit like this and define the equations that, de that describe the behavior of this circuit. So based on those, on those methods, following the rules, we can obtain a set of equations like this and then we can just use the, the functions from the Wolfram language in order to solve the system and obtain like a formula. Like in this case, what's the voltage of the of this node based on the values of all the components that we see here and also in the values of the resistors and the voltages. When the circuits contain uh, other components like capacitors and inductors, we need to describe them using differential equations. In the, in the section of analysis, we also learn a few techniques to simplify the analysis, for example, using the Laplace transform. When using the Laplace transform, this technique allows us to, use, to, to see the circuits in a different way. For example, we can see how a circuit behaves in terms of frequency rather than time. If we take as, as example this simple circuit that has one capacitor and one inductor, we can follow the, the techniques that we learn in this lesson in order to get the, like this transfer function. And once we get the transfer function, we can start calculating, defining formulas to calculate what are the values of the components that will give us the response that we want. And, and we can see, for example, how it will behave for different, for different parameters. And based on this, we can decide what's going to be the values of each of the components. And as mentioned before, the, the four parties operational amplifiers. And as I mentioned before, uh, operational amplifiers are integrated circuits that allow us to perform operations using voltages. Here we can see four different circuits in which uh, we use the operational amplifier. Here you can see it on each. And just by, con by changing the components that we, that we surrounded, just changing the connections, we can make it perform different operations. In this case, we have uh, an addition and just by changing the components, we can, we can get a subtraction, we can get comparisons, uh, and by adding a capacitor, we can get an integrator. And there are like a bunch of config configurations that we, can, that we can create. And during this part, we learn all these configurations, and we also learn how to calculate, uh, how, how, how to calculate the values of the components and make this circuit behaves the way we want. And once we know how to design and calculate simple operations like additions and integrations, we can start putting them together to create more complex systems. For example, in, this in the course, one, one of my favorite applications is, as I mentioned, music technology. So uh, many of the examples have to do with sound generation. And here we can see a circuit of a voltage controlled oscillator, which is basically a circuit that generates sound waves and it uses uh, three operational amplifiers. And we can actually simulate the circuit and, and hear how it will sound. Mm. Here we have what's the sound of a triangle wave. It may be a little bit low for you because it isn't, doesn't have too many harmonics, but now let's hear a, a square wave. 
and this is a, a pulse wave. And finally, a saw through. And all these waves are being generated by this, this circuit. And the next thing that we can create, once we have a sound generator, we, we need like a way of shaping the sound. For that, we can use a voltage control filter. And this is the, the circuit that, that, we, that we analyze, which consists of different uh, subsystems. We have two integrators, a subtractor, and also uh, like a kind of mixer to control, to control the signals. And we, when we put together the sound waves that we generate and we pass them through the filter and we modify a little bit the parameters, we can get very interesting uh, sounds. For example, this one. Or just by changing the parameters, we can get like different, different uh, sounds. And if we can continue like creating these kind of systems, uh, we can, we can develop other component other blocks that that can that are used in, in synthesizers for example here we have a, a diagram where I put the the voltage control oscillator that, that we listened before the filter a, a voltage control amplifier and a few modulators like a low frequency oscillator and an envelope and then I put together also a sequencer which is is just like a, a the notes that are that are going to be played and when I simulate this model, I can I can get the results and, and listen to the music that this circuit creates. I'm going to play it for you. So that's like a basic bass line uh, that is uh, entirely simulated in System Modeler. Okay, so all this, I, I took all these circuits that we saw before and I built them using real components. In these pictures, we can see the resistors, capacitors, and other integrated circuits. Then I, I wire them together in order to put some panels, and then I can mount them in this rack where I can start connecting all the modules together and also uh, make music with it. I'm going to show you a, a snippet of a video that I recorded where we can listen to to some of some of the sounds that I created uh, using this system. That's basically the whole course. Now I would like to show you how I use System Modeler and, and the Wolfram language to create the interactive not notebooks. So all the diagrams that we that we saw uh, were created in System Modeler. If I th these are the this this is the synthesizer diagram that we saw before, and I can uh, enter inside of these blocks, and we, and I can see the the electric components that I use and also other uh, subsystems. For example, the core of the oscillator, which was this part. So basically, this this block, it's it's a dual oscillator, it's the one that you saw in the video that I use. This is the filter that I showed before, and we can see all, all the electric components, the operational amplifier models, etc. Uh, this is a voltage controlled amplifier. Uh, the envelope generator. So the nice thing is that that when we creates this kind of this kind of diagrams we can simulate them and, and create on top of them the the interactive panels for example if, if i take this simple circuit which is the one that i, that I showed in in the previous slide and i simulate it it is possible to to define a plot within system modeler and also define uh, using these explore panels uh, sliders that will help us to change the parameters of the of the components so I, I can do exactly what i was doing before 
like changing changing components and see how and see what's the impact of, on the simulation and starting doing experiments with it and once i have this panel created uh, using a simple command i can take i can replicate all that behavior into a into a manipulate within a notebook uh, and that's exactly the same panel and experiment that i designed in system modeler just taken back to to the notebook and as i mentioned before as well it, it is possible to simulate a model this is what i'm doing here and after that i can take the simulation results and create an audio an audio object which will play play uh, play back the sound and this is this is the 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 sound that i played before this uh, like sequence of notes there is also another nice thing which is which uh, which we can obtain equations out of the systems. For example, I, here I have a, a, a very small circuit where I can get uh, all the equations with a command. And these are the, the equations that describe the whole system. And then using some of the of the Wolfram language features, for example, to solve these equations and obtain like these uh, long formulas that uh, that is the complete solution for our circuits uh, based on symbols. And from here I can uh, replace some values in order to get like some nice formulas that describe describe the the circuit. So here's here's again the link to the course. Uh, you should be able of finding it if you search in your uh, favorite uh, search engine, Introduction to Electric Circuits, uh, Wolfram. And as I mentioned before, it is about uh, four hours and a half of, of of videos. There is also a study group available. Here's the link. And in this study group, we went through all the lessons and we had Q&A sessions. Thank you very much.